So you've been thinking about building your first pedal board, but you're not sure or are confused about proper pedal order? Well, don't worry, your boy's got you, because in today's video, I'm gonna give you the ultimate guide to proper pedal order. Let's go. My name is AJ and welcome to the channel. Here we talk about guitar, gear, and other nerdy guitar things. Thanks for stopping by for another video. Now, full disclosure, if you are building a spaceship of a pedal board, that means with MIDI switching, effects sends and loops, and input buffers, this is probably not the right video for you, but all the concepts I talk about still apply, so why don't you just hang out, dude, and enjoy the video. Second, there are no hard rules for proper pedal order, but the ones I talk about today are pretty standard, and they are standard because they sound good and they make your pedal board sound good. And because you are a beginner, I encourage you to try this pedal order out. And when you become comfortable with it and you know how it sounds, then you could experiment putting different pedals in different orders. With all of that out of the way, let's get to the first pedal in our chain. Actually, before we start with the first pedal, I wanna show you guys this flow chart. I don't know about you guys, but I'm a very visual person. I need to see things in order for me to understand it. And so as you can see from this flow chart, our signal path for the pedals go from your guitar to the amp. The first pedal in our chain is a tuner. I know it's not very sexy, but it's arguably the most important. You can play all the notes in the scales. You can play it super fast, but if you're not in tune with your band, you're gonna sound like poo. Another reason why tuners are great is because they have second and sometimes third functions. Typically, the second function of a tuner pedal is that it's also a mute pedal. That means when you step on it, you can mute your guitar sound completely. So while you're tuning, the audience doesn't have to hear you. You can change guitars without having that input jack noise. Or if you wanna stay quiet in between songs, you can press that mute or click on the tuner and it will kill your guitar sound. I picked up this tuner pedal on Amazon and it also has a third function. It's also a power supply, look at that, it's so cool. It powers eight other nine volt battery pedals, such a useful thing. So number one pedal in your chain is a tuner. The next type of pedals in our chain are impedance sensitive devices. I know what you're thinking, AJ, what the f does that mean? These are vintage Waz, vintage fuzz faces, treble boosters, and I'm not gonna go into detail about the schematics, but just know this. This is old school technology. When these pedals were invented, all these other pedals were not invented. They do not play well with other pedals, and so you have to put it early in the chain. But chances are, because you are new, you're probably not gonna have any of these vintage pedals but if you are rocking a wah pedal, I would put it in this position. The next pedal in our chain are dynamic pedals. These pedals are compressors, just like the Ben from Fender, which is a great compressor pedal. Filters, octaves like the Pog or the Digitech Whammy. These pedals affect the overall dynamics of your guitar tone and so much like the old school pedals, they have to go early in our signal chain. Moving on to the next pedal in our chain and my favorite kind of pedals, drive pedals. I'm talking about overdrives, just like the BBE Green Screamer, which is a tube screamer copy, the JHS Overdrive Preamp, which is a great overdrive, the Hot Wax by Electro Harmonics, which is a dual overdrive, and of course, Distortion, the classic DS1 by Boss. Now, a common practice is stacking Distortion and Overdrive, and I love doing this because then you have different gain stages. I love my amp to be the edge of breakup, and then I hit it with some Overdrive, and then the next level would be Distortion. Of course, there's endless debate which one goes before, Overdrive into Distortion or the opposite, Distortion into Overdrive, me personally, I like having overdrive before the distortion. That way I can drive the distortion and have a crazy amount of gain. Comment down below, what do you do when you stack overdrives? 
Next on our chain are modulation pedals. These are things like tremolo, chorus, and my favorite phases. I particularly like the Electroharmonic Small Stone Phaser and the MXR Phase 95, which is an emulation of two classic Phase 90s by MXR. This is a great pedal. You can also pick up multi-effect modulation pedals like this one. I picked this one up on Amazon. I think it was like $49. Uh, it has all the modulation effects I just talked about. The most important thing with modulation is that it adds movement to your overall sound. That's why I like having it after the drive pedals and before the time-based effects, which are coming up next. The next type of pedals on our chain are time-based pedals, so they create time and space. The next type of pedal in our chain is the delay, one of my favorite effects. I love delays with dotted eighth delays. I particularly like this one, the tape delay by Empress Effects, which is a Canadian company. Shout out Empress Effects pedals. And I bought this Line 6 pedal after my DL4 was stolen, so I use this M5 mostly for delay. This is a great little pedal. That's pretty much all I got for delay pedals. And the last pedal in our chain is of course Reverb. I like this one from JHS. It's the three series Reverb. It sounds phenomenal. It's simple and it's quite affordable. Sometimes on my boards, there's not enough space for reverb. So I won't even have a reverb pedal on my board and I don't use reverb enough to justify having some real estate on my pedal board. And so I'll just use the reverb on my amp typically. But you do you and you put that reverb if you wanna put reverb on your board. All right, let's build a pedal board. Now we're not gonna talk about pedal power. We're not gonna talk about connections as in the patch cables. We're just gonna talk about pedal order. We're using this board from Pedal Train. It's the Metro 24 from Pedal Train. It's a great little board. First pedal in our chain, as I mentioned in the video and in our chart, is a tuner. We're gonna put it right here. Next, we would have an old school pedal. If I had one, if I had a vintage Fuzz Phase or a vintage Wah or any of those old school pedals, we would put it in this chain. If I was using a Wah, which is this one, I would typically put it here but because of the size of the board, I would actually have it outside of the board. That way I can make space for all the pedals, but I would still run it in series. So the tuner would go first into the wah, but for this build, we're not gonna use the wah. Next would be a dynamic pedal. We're using a compressor, which is the Benz from Fender. I'll just put it right here. After the dynamic pedals, we have our drive pedals. I like to have two, as I mentioned earlier, I'll use an overdrive, Electroharmonics Hot Wax, and the DS1 from Boss. As I mentioned earlier, I like having the distortion after the overdrive because I like to drive the distortion harder. I use very little gain on the overdrive, uh, and in that way, I can do multiple gain stages. After the drive section, we have our modulation. Again, I love Phase 90s. Uh, I will put this typically right up here for space constraints. So the drive go into the modulation and from the modulation, we have a delay. Tape delay from Empress Pedals, that'll go right here. From the tape delay, we go into our last type of pedals, which is a reverb. I like the JHS 3 Series reverb. It'll go at the very end of the chain. Just to go over it one more time, our guitar goes into the tuner. The tuner will go typically into an old school pedal if I had a wah, I'd put it right here. It would go into the wah. From the old school pedal, it'd go into dynamic pedal, which is a compressor. From the compressor, it'll go into our drive section, which is an overdrive and a distortion. After the distortion, we have modulation. You can swap this out for chorus, tremolo, whatever you like, I like phases. From the modulation, it goes into delay, and to delay, we go into reverb and out to the amp. And that's basically pedal order. Well, that concludes the ultimate guide to pedal order. I hope you found it simple. I hope you found value in this and I hope you use it. Once you get the hang of how these pedals interact with each other, then you can mess around with different pedal orders and create your own sound.
if you want a copy of the pedal chart, send me a DM on Instagram. It's linked down below and write the word flow and I will send it to you for free. Shout out to my friends at Super Slides for providing this sick hat. Their link is in the description below. They have six slides and sick hats. If you made it to the end of the video, I appreciate you so much. Please consider liking and subscribing. Hit that bell for notifications. I will see you guys in the next video. Pick up that guitar, plug it into your new pedal board, and let's go.